Hello YouTube and welcome to Musing About Music, the show focusing on music past, present, and future. Before we get too far into the new year, let us take a look at some of the present artists who helped us ring in 2015. In addition to the headliner, Taylor Swift, we will be looking at the artists who were nominated for Best New Artist for the Grammys or AMAs recently, and also performed at the Dick Clark's New Year's Rocking Eve. I did this to narrow the scope of the video, but if you would like me to talk about your favorite artist, go ahead and throw a recommendation in the comments. Now it's time for a Lonely Fact, the part of the show where I take a fact from my research that I couldn't fit anywhere else in my script, and I ask you, the viewer, a trivia question. Today's question. What was Taylor Swift's first song in the top five of the Billboard Hot 100 chart? As always, I'll have an answer near the end of the video. Before I start, let me just say that I will only spend a little bit of time with each artist. I will tell you a little bit about their musical style, some of their big songs, and finally, my opinion. Let me repeat that last part, my opinion. I am not stating who I think is the best as fact. Actually, I would like to hear those of you who disagree with me in the comments. Iggy Azalea is an Australian-born rapper who made her way into the American hip-hop scene around three years ago. Her entry was fueled by YouTube. Got a lot of that happening these days. As for the song you probably know her for, it's Fancy, which hit number one on the Top 100 chart last year, shortly before Problem, a collaboration with Ariana Grande, hit number two. This puts her on the same par as the Beatles, the last artist to have done this stunt. With this in mind, I'll say that as far as rappers go, I do actually like her style. Her music or interviews aren't exactly PG, so be careful if you go looking for her. Her lyrics seem to be heavy self-praising, but that is par for the course in this genre. Again, I don't listen to much rap, but if you ask me to, I'd choose Iggy over others. Bastille is an English rock band who surprised themselves with their own critical acclaim. This is an indie pop rock band that hit it big around four years ago, breaking through with Virgin Records. One of their early releases was actually put into EA's The Sims 3 Supernatural, and was redone in the Sim language for this purpose. You may know them for Pompeii, which they played on New Year's Eve and also runs on the radio frequently. Some passive critics praise Icarus as being higher in quality than Pompeii, and I would venture to agree with them. The song shows a lot more complexity and uniqueness than the other, but feel welcome to disagree and debate in the comments. This genre is more my speed, and a lot of indie bands do a good job with creating songs that have different meanings for different listeners, and Bastille is no different. Although critics consider some of their music hit or miss, I would consider them a personal favorite. Megan Trainer is a pop solo artist, which one may classify as bubblegum pop in her more recent songs. She got her big break with Yellow Dog Music in songwriting, but as a performer, she didn't really hit the scenes until June's All About That Bass, which topped the charts in 58 countries. If you don't know her for that one, you may know her lips are moving. At the time of this showing, her first album, Title, is probably released. I don't really care for pop as a whole, since it seems cookie cutter and forced at times, but I am actually okay with her music. My friend mentioned that her lyrics and tone come off as harsh, and I might agree with him there. She makes very strong statements in her songs that have been called skinny shaming. But in her interviews, she seems approachable. It is very hard to get to know a person through just their performances. I'll end this section by saying it is good to see more of an every woman as a pop icon. Taylor Swift is a country artist gone pop. And if you don't know who she is, I'm sorry, but you've been living under a rock for the past 10 years. Swift caught her break at a fairly young age and has been increasing in popularity ever since. Why? Because she is genuine, kind to her fans, philanthropic, and a role model worth emulating. She even made Barbara Walters' 10 Most Fascinating People this past year. To be honest, there are a lot of songs for which you may know her, but the most recently popular of them is Shake It Off, and then Blank Space, which beat Shake It Off on the top charts, making her the first female to manage such a feat. I will be honest, when Swift hit the scene, I disliked her. Country is another one of my less preferred genres, and I try to avoid the inherently popular on principle. But the more I see and hear of her, the more I seem to like her. Speaking of things that we like about Swift, her first song that cracked the top five of the Billboard Hot 100 chart was Love Story hitting number four. 
She consistently landed higher on the country top chart and has made the top five on the Billboard Hot 100 several times since. And with that, our lonely fact has been answered. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Musing About Music. Let me know of your opinions of the artists mentioned in this video in the comments. Tell me who else you would like to hear me discuss, or if you would like to see me dedicate an entire video to one of the artists mentioned today. Thank you again for watching this video, and if you'd like to see more from me, feel free to like and subscribe.